imagine a world where all the knowledge of the world is already online and accessible in ways that are currently not possible. Learning should focus the attention at the student. Anything that gets developed in terms of a tool should be getting the student involved in project-based learning. Technology can do a great deal to unlock the mystery of learning. When you think about the impact that technology has had already in the teaching and learning process, it's been pretty eventful. But what we want to do is to take that and quantum leap it. Select all. Center. Bowl. A businessman, a teacher, and an engineer are collaborating remotely on a video report documenting the influence of technology on learning. They reflect on their own history and uncover predictions from the past. They discover men and women whose visions inspired advances that propelled learning to a lifelong experience and the potential for those visions to carry on. I've got the vids you sent. I'll add them to what I've got. Let's get back with each other in half hour to go over the timeline. That'll work for me. Me too. In the last 20 years, we've been very good at creating computing technology that can manage documentation. We can cut and paste in very creative ways. But now, we can build scenarios where we can get children to think critically about managing complex systems. One of the most important dimensions of moving testing beyond where it is now is to move it out of this passive model into something that's much more engaging, much more forceful, and ultimately something that will help us to understand better the capabilities of the students that we're testing. I think at this moment in time, for the very first time, we have the opportunity to give students technology that they can feel is more or less their own. The combination of cost, form factor, and improved human interface technologies puts us at a moment in time in addressing the student that we've never had before. Vid of John Seeley Brown a couple of months ago, around June 25th. I think as we look forward, we're seeing that this notion of literacy has to be dramatically expanded. There are three forms of literacy that all come together screen literacy, having to do with cinematic language, then couple that with the notion of interactivity. A third kind of screen literacy is how do you navigate on the screen through the infinite sea of information? How do you sense of where to go? How do you feel comfortable in terms of finding your way through this very complex informational space? I've got a couple vids to add. I'll put them in now rather than sending them to you. Great. There's a power in virtual interaction, virtual learning, because it is seamless. It allows the individual to move effortlessly on to the next level of understanding. And the computer can interact in a way that the individual not only is steered, but is reinforced. So if we can increase enjoyment in learning and have people want to do it for its own sake, then you start a positive feedback cycle where enjoyment in learning begets the desire to do additional learning and that builds on itself. Well, I think that the interesting challenge we have as we go forward is to figure out how the virtual world augments the physical world. Not replaces it, but augments it. It's a yin-yang between the physical and the virtual, the virtual and the physical. If we can understand that yin-yang relationship, I think we will understand how to build incredibly powerful learning environments in the future. Talent is the key and education is the foundation. On one hand, we need to train a number of talented people who will enter the international front lines, master key technology and be top level design experts. It is so much easier to get something done with more minds than just one because somebody could say something and that will click. You go, oh, I've got a great idea. And I think that's the way technology helps us if we're training our teachers to be able to work collaboratively, seamlessly in the curriculum. I just tell my kids, I have no idea what it's going to be like in the future for you, but you're going to need to know how to change, how to go from one thing to another thing. So if you can be a person who's successful at change, and you can be a lifelong learner, somebody who's willing to step in and learn, you are going to be the successful person. 
What we need to do in order to bring the enchantment of learning back to the student is work together with parents and policy makers and learning scientists and technology scientists and create an environment that is going to stimulate a new way of thinking about how we learn. That's going to be exciting.